Karachi, the largest city in Pakistan, home to 18 million residents, and also the fastest growing mega city in the world. This metropolis constitutes 22% of Pakistan's urban population with a constant influx of migrants seeking jobs from all over the country. It is also the only port city in Pakistan. In 1947, at the time of independence, Karachi was a city of 450,000 people. To the north of it was the seasonal Liari River, and beyond that to the north, there were extensive fields, orchards, and pasture lands. To the east of Liari was the Malir Oasis. Post independence, Karachi's master plans declared these parts as protected green areas. However, due to large scale migration from India and other parts of Pakistan, the entire Liari belt and part of the Malir Oasis were converted into formal and informal low and lower middle income housing. The only green areas that have survived along the Liari riverbed are the traditional graveyards of the Muslims, Hindus and Jews. Our story is that we have been in the village for 250 years. We remember that in this river, there was no water in the river. There were small trees, there were no water in the river. There were no water in the river, there were no water in the river. पीते थे और उसे अपना बर्तन वगैरह सब कुछ इसी यही पानी को यूज़ करते थे इस्तेमाल करते थे यहाँ बकायदा एक काश्त होती थी फसलों की काश्त होती लोग सब्जियाँ बोते थे लेकिन जूं जूं कराची शहर बढ़ता गया कराची शहर की आबादी बढ़ती गई और कराची का जितना भी सेवरेज लाइन है तकरीबन इस इलाके के जितने भी सेवरेज लाइन है सबको आके लियारी नदी में छोड़ दिया है और आप ये देखो अगर जहाँ मीठा पानी चलता था वहाँ दरख्तें होंगी घास होगा सब कुछ होगा अब इस आप नदी को देखो बगैर this expansion of the city into the pasture land of the villages located on the periphery in the Karachi district has continued. And over 150,000 residential plots have been developed here in just the last three years, suffocating what were meant to be Karachi's lungs. Karachi used to have a very thriving uh, rural hinterland. Agricultural practices here were very sound and uh, even uh, till like in the 1973 master plan, uh, we had a very clear vision of where we wanted to go in terms of expanding the agricultural base and uh, using it in a way so that food security is ensured in Karachi. But then a number of things happened actually uh, because of which the agricultural and the rural hinterland in Karachi is now in fact facing an existential threat. The uh, proportion of uh, agricultural land to built up land, it, the agricultural land was four times that of built up land in 1948, but uh, by 2010 it was 0.4%. Uh, in 1960, 61% of the land in Karachi was cultivable land, but by the year 2000 it was left to only 19%. So that's a massive reduction in the cultivable land and agricultural land. All these areas are, you know, massively extracted for uh, sand and gravel. 318,000 cubic feet of gravel and sand being extracted every day. So it's an enormous amount and up to 20 feet to 30 feet depth, you know, at most places uh, have been extracted. And more alarmingly is the groundwater uh, level that has, you know, been going down. It's more than 300 feet now, and that's according to a study recently done by the Department of Geography, University of Karachi. This uh, reduction in uh, the agricultural land also has an implication for climate change, for example, because green spaces act as a very strong resilience factor within the city in combating, for example, the extreme heat events and also urban flooding because in case of urban flooding, the green spaces within the city, they act as an infiltration basin. To accommodate Karachi's expanding population, the city sprawled into its rural areas. This was regarded as godsend for the poor, providing them with relatively affordable land on which they could build their houses. But residents here are beginning to feel otherwise. I was here because I didn't have a house. I was living on the ground. 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 I was living on the ground
आठ हज़ार रुपये ज़मीन मिल रही है तीन सौ रुपये महीने पे तो अभी मैंने अपने उन्नीस हज़ार जमा करा हुआ था मैंने ये मकान ले लिया जंगल में मैं चलो अपनी ज़मीन हो जाएगी बच्चों का साथ हो जाएगा रहने का जब से हम आए ना जब से यहाँ दुखी उठा रहे बस इतनी इतनी भरी भरी आती हैं कि औरतों को चढ़ने की जगह नहीं मिलती फिर खड़े रहते हैं एक एक दो दो घंटे तक रोड के ऊपर चिंची में बैठो चिंची वाले को पैसे दो तीस रुपये किराया लेता है वो नागन तक के शहर में तो यह बहुत करीब हो जाते हैं हम वहाँ तो क्यों बगले हैं प्लाजे हैं हर नौकरी मिल जाती दो दो घर में भी जाके कर सकती हूँ मैं बच्चे भी मेरे महफूज रहते हैं वहाँ पर अब मैं सोचती हूँ मकान बेचने की तो इसकी कीमत बहुत कम लग रही है पहले हम लालू खेत में रहते थे किराए पे और वो अच्छी तरीके से हम लोग तो यानी कि जिंदगी गुजार रहे थे वहाँ ये था कि फौरन तो हर चीज़ जगह के लिए गाड़ी मिल जाती थी एक ही गाड़ी सफ़र करते थे और फिर वहीं के वहीं दो तीन बच्चे हमारे काम करते थे लालू खेत में कम से कम हमारे यानी कि एक आदमी के सत्तर से ले कर अस्सी तक खर्चा है खाली कराएगा और दो घंटे पौने दो घंटे का यानी कि सफ़र करना पड़ जाता है यानी कि अगर यहाँ से हम शहर में किराए पे रहते हैं ना तो वो हमारे लिए बेहतर है अकॉर्डिंग टू स्टडी डन बाय द अर्बन रिसोर्स सेंटर इन कराची द चैलेंजेस एसोसिएटेड विद कम्यूटिंग ओवर लॉन्ग डिस्टेंसेस कैन बी जज फ्रॉम द मैनर इन विच मोर देन 2,000 वुमेन ट्रैवल फ्रॉम जस्ट थ्री अर्बनाइज विलेजेस इन द नॉर्थ टू लीड सेटलमेंट इन द साउथ फॉर देर लाइवलीहुड They leave home at 6 a.m. and don't return till 7 or 8 p.m., spending around 4 hours in transit. The commute costs approximately 90 rupees a day, which is roughly equivalent to 50% of rented accommodation in the city center. To overcome some of the negative aspects of living on the fringe, A new phenomenon is emerging in this rapidly growing city. This is the densification of the old inner cities, low income, formal and informal settlements. Individual homes on small lots are being turned into high-rise apartment blocks, not only changing the lifestyles of the inhabitants, but also the physical form of the city. Punjab colony exemplifies this trend. where demand for living in the city center is driving this densification investor hai yahan pe jo hai na investor hai wo paisa lagate hain jaise aapki zameen hai aapki zameen niche se le lete hain aapko lag uske upar wo log kharcha karte hain aapko 1 plus 3 is tarah jaisa bhi unke wo hisab kitab hota hai us tarike se wo log de dete hain baaki sara wo invest karke baaki wo sab wo apna sale kar dete hain maksad ye hamari apni zameen hai investor ko humne di hai लेकिन ये है कि अभी तीन साल गुजरने के बाद भी जो है अभी तक वो जगह जो है हमारी कंप्लीट नहीं हो सकी है और अभी ये है कि इन्वेस्टर है वो भागा हुआ है तो ये है कि जगह हमारी अभी फटे में पड़ी हुई है कंस्ट्रक्शन हुई है ये कैंटोमेंट बोर्ड के हिसाब से ले दे के हुई है वो पैसा लेते हैं तो कंस्ट्रक्शन होती है न ड्राइंग है न डिज़ाइन है उन्होंने अपनी एक आजार आजार बनाई हुई वो चौधरी बने हुए हमें जिस तरह चाहे वो रख सकते इंक्रीजिंग नंबर ऑफ फैमिलीज विश टू लिव विद इन द्लोजर टू दिटी क्लोजर टू प्लेस वर्क एंड दैट इज वॉट इज ड्राइविंग दिस डेंसिफिकेशन the private sector has stepped in informal private sector has stepped in to cater to this demand much of this development is informal in the case of the kachi abadis it's completely informal therefore these structures are not monitored they don't follow any rules regulations of the karachi building control authority these high rise buildings are built on very shallow foundations in an earthquake they will simply collapse rules and regulations related to ventilation related to light are not followed the apartments are becoming smaller and smaller so that they can become affordable to the people 
in low income settlements. In the process, you have large families living in one room or two rooms, creating immense congestion. And naturally, when there is such congestion, there are bound to be social problems associated with it. Also, many of these high, not many, but all these high rise buildings that are being built in the Katiabadis have no lifts. So people have to walk up seven floors, six floors. They can stay cooped up in their apartments because it's a difficult process coming, going up and down, especially for elderly people and for children. Janti Pawar is a clerk who lives in a rented flat in the center of the city. The disadvantages of living here are numerous. मेरे घर में मेरी फैमिली टोटल सात अफराद हैं मम्मी पापा हैं मैं हूँ सिस्टर है दो बच्चे हैं मेरी वाइफ हैं अदर किसी और के घर पे आप जाओगे ना तो आपको आठ या दस फैमिली एक ही घर के अंदर एक ही कमरे में आपको मिलेगी पर दो कमरे एक सेन है जिस पे हम मम्मी पापा हैं वो सेन में सो जाते हैं और हम लोग हमारे बच्चे हमारे कमरे में जैसे सोते हैं मसले मसाले कभी क्योंकि हमारी जो है सैलियाँ ना टाइम पर नहीं होती तो हम लोग कभी लेट दे देते तो हमें इतनी बातें सुना के जाता है कि पूरी बिल्डिंग वाले सुनते हैं फिर कभी कभार ऐसा भी होता है वो हमें धमकियाँ भी देखे कि भाई घर खाली करो वरना सुबह बजते हम खुद आके आपका सामान बाहर निकाल देंगे इन स्पाइट ऑफ दिस पवर एंड हिज फैमिली प्रफर दीज कंडीशन ओवर दोज एसोसिएटेड विद लिविंग ऑन द सिटीज एच वे ही माइट बी एबल टू ओन हाउस यहाँ से इतना आसान है इसलिए कि यहाँ से बच्चों की स्कूल मेरे करीब है और मेरी जॉब भी करीब है अगर ऐसा हम लोग कहीं कराची से बाहर के रहते और बच्चे मेरे शहर में पढ़ रहे तो वहाँ से यहाँ लाना बड़ा डिफिकल्ट हो जाएगा अगर वहाँ जगह में ले ली और मुझे सहूलत ही वो नाम ले तो फिर मेरे तो सारा बेकार है क्योंकि जितना मैं वहाँ से आने कराए दे दूँगा करना उसके बेहतर मैं यहाँ ही रह के इसको करने कराए दे के क्लियर ना करूँ Clearly, demand for accommodation in the urban center is driving densification, but it's not the only reason. So that is one aspect of densification. The other is that families are multiplying. So what happens is that people build upwards to accommodate their expanding families. These are the two trends that are currently changing the landscape of the informal settlements. in karachi dekhiye housing ke hawale se jahan tak hum baat kar rahe hain to housing ke hawale se hamare ilake mein khaas kar joint family system hai shuru se to lihaza tabdili itni zyada ad tak nahi aayi jo humne ghar dekha hua pehle jab humne bachpan mein dekha kam az kam ek maka ek kamra tha jo ab ja ke agar uske bacche hue bachchon ne shaadiyan kar li usi jagah par double ho ke do teen kamre ban gaye और इसी बुनियाद पर जो है इलाका मतलब बढ़ तो रहा है लेकिन कि जगह तो महदूद है आपको मालूम है कि जगह कोई मतलब सौ गज़ को दो सौ गज़ तो नहीं कर सकता अलबत् उसको स्टेप बाय स्टेप बढ़ा रहे हैं बिल्डिंगें बन रही हैं मीन वाइल कराचीटिकलीबिलिटी अकॉर्डिंग टू ऑफिशियल फिगर्स The number of motorbikes on the roads increased from 450,000 in 1990 to 500,000 in 2004. The figure has risen to well over 1.4 million in 2013. This increase, however, does not help women, as women in Karachi don't ride motorbikes because of cultural constraints and safety issues. आए दिन तो मोटरसाइकिल जो आदमी चला रहे हैं उनका एक्सीडेंट हो जाते बिचारे इतनी बुरी बुरी मौत मरते हैं हमने देखा हमारे गली में हुए हैं ऐसे डर इतने तो आदमी नहीं चला सकते तो हम औरतें कहाँ से चलाएंगे यहाँ मोटरसाइकिल निज़ाम इतना है सड़कों का ख़राब यहाँ पे कुछ चल देते हैं अभी हमारे यहीं पे ऐसे डर हुआ है मोटरसाइकिल पे जाता हूँ 120 सौ बीस रुपये पेट्रोल आने आने में लगता है आधा घंटा लगती है पहुँचने में और आधा घंटा लगती है आने में जिस दिन हड़ताल हो जाए क्या कोई बंदे मंदे मारे जाते हैं कोई मसले मिसाइल हो जाते तो बड़ी तंगी का सामना होता है और जिस दिन यानी कि पैसे नहीं है जेब में पेट्रोल डालने के बस में यानी कि करते हैं क्या बाइक ख़राब हो गई है तो दो दो घंटे हमें वहाँ पे पहुँचने में लग जाता है द वंस अट्रैक्टिव प्रोपोजिशन ऑफ ओनिंग लैंड ऑन द इनफॉर्मली डिवेलप्ड फ्रेंजेज इज फर्दर एट स्टेक 
with the cost of land having risen from 176 rupees in 1991 to 10,000 rupees per square meter today. This is an increase from almost twice the value of the daily wage then to over 40 times the value of the daily wage for unskilled labor today. Much of Karachi's land use, housing and transport problems could be overcome if the poor lived near their places of work in formally planned areas. This is not impossible as Karachi has substantial government land, both within the city and on the immediate periphery. What has happened over the past several decades is that new satellite schemes had been planned and the poor were actually dispersed with an anticipation that fast-moving transportation links would be able to connect them to the places of work, especially in the city centre, as well as the new industrial locations which were created. The inner city areas were considered to be high-priced and high-value high lands, which were apportioned for different types of uses other than low-income houses. It is usually believed that lower income settlements will eventually become ill-managed and will not have a potential to maintain a certain type of urban morphology, uh, urban performance, which is desired by the relatively high-end real estate developers. But one thing which has been missing in our policy framework is the possibility of allocating funding, allocating credit for acquiring land. Usually the, the credit is kept for the construction of properties on land which is already owned by any owner. However, we all know that the poor do not have the means to access land without the availability of credit. And if various type of instruments are generated in the form of cooperative mechanisms or in certain cases collective low income groups, that can in fact provide a very effective mechanism of making inner city lands accessible to the poor. Meanwhile, city dwellers are increasingly opposed to this planning mindset that relegates them to the fringes rather than accommodate them closer to the center. We don't want to go here, when we go to our place, where we are living, we have to give them all here. Why do we give them here? We give them here, we give them here, we give them here, we give them here, we give them here. गुलशन एकबाल में दे देवे गुलशन मेहमान में दे देवे हमको इतना दूर क्यों भेजा कि हम लोग ऐसे फालतू के हैं जो हम लोग को खड्डे में भेजेगा हुकूमत तो एक जो घर होता है ना जिसे कहते हैं माँ ज़मीन को कहते हैं पाकिस्तान को कहते हैं जहाँ बंदा रहता है वही रियायत अच्छी होती है मैं मर जाऊँगा तो आप कहीं मबाद से सरजानी नहीं आओगे वहाँ सिर्फ जनाजे में दस लोग होएंगे बीस होएंगे तीस होएंगे यहाँ मैं मरूँगा तो 400 लोग होएंगे। Because of Karachi's rapidly increasing middle class as well as political conflicts, the issue of land has also become politicized. Political parties, you know, have also now uh, been divided along ethnic lines. MQM people relate with the Urdu speaking community. People's Party, which is a party having a national uh, stature, is being uh, associated with the Sindhi community in Karachi. ANP, also a national party, is being associated with the Pashto speaking community. So that's very unfortunate. Then, of course, as uh, is being witnessed very clearly now, that land is being settled, particularly in the peripheral areas of Karachi, on ethnic basis, on political basis, on party basis. So, of course, that also creates a lot of friction. And of course, when you have that kind of, uh, uh, of attention that is created, you know, then there is, of course, uh, naturally a spill off in the form of violence and crime and killings. Yeah. There are 13 different land owning agencies in Karachi, each with their own bylaws and zoning regulations and with little coordination with each other. Also, the government's unwillingness to provide land for additional housing near the city centre or the immediate periphery is prompting existing settlements to develop upwards. The crux of the issue is of the urban poor gaining access to formal housing, as 70% of Karachi's population comprises of this social group. 
You know, you cannot do without planning. These things are happening, they are taking shape, but they can happen in a planned manner. You have to have an acceptance of this to begin with. Then you can support it through loans, through new planning rules and regulations that informal developers can follow. We have not made any such attempt so far. We have just let this happen. We have not accepted it, nor have we rejected it. The solution, of course, lies that where state land is available, you have, you have low-income housing, and you support it with loans. Karachi, which right now is four towns, really distinct cities, divided between the rich, the poor, the elite, and uh, the middle class. I think it will become a multi-class city. And I think we need to do that. A very important factor that would help in the creation of this multi-class city is the circular railway. Where the circular railway intersects with the road network, those are the ideal locations for the development of high-density, low-income housing. And you have lots of land at these intersections that can be used for this purpose. Karachi cannot expand any further. It has to densify. This is what Karachi needs and this is what is happening, although we are not officially catering to that need. Housing demand in Karachi is 80,000 units per year, of which the formal sector fulfills only 40%. Traditionally, the rest has been provided by the development of individual plots in informal settlements on the city's fringes. Given the rising cost of transport and land, this is no longer a viable option. Hence, the densification of the inner city informal settlements through the building of high-rises will not only increase, but will accelerate, creating islands of poverty and deprivation in areas of relative affluence. The repercussions of such cross-urban inequalities are social and political conflicts, which are already taking a violent turn in the city. One of the ways in which a level of equity and justice can be established is by facilitating this densification rather than ignoring it. By utilizing state land within the city for high-density, low-income housing and making it affordable through appropriate fiscal policy. The failure to do this will turn an already divided Karachi into an even more environmentally degraded and poor, unfriendly city. Our political and bureaucratic stance towards this issue reflects an anti-poor bias which must be overcome for a sustainable future of peace and prosperity for all.